You got born again. Do you remember the day you got born again? The Bible said you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Therefore, if God be for you, who can be against you? As we worship and praise that ultimate gift. Amen. We begin to thank how much God did so much more than humanity ever dreamed or thought that he would do. The fact Moses is he didn't ready to go on. And the angels took him high up on a mountaintop and showed him, opened the eyes of his understanding. And he said this 10,000 times more. My Bible tells me, I have not seen nor ear heard those things which God has stored up for them that love him. Amen. Yeah. Everybody there and say, you haven't seen anything yet. Yeah. Come on. Praise the Lord. We've just begun. Come on. We've just begun. 10,000 years and we've just got started. 10,000 years and we've just begun. Amen. That's all we need to think of on Saturday night. Amen. I tell you what, it opens up my eyes to realize the greater is he that's in me than him that's in the world. I don't care what you're going through at the present time. I don't care the difficulties that you're facing. I want to tell you, God's bigger than your problems. He's bigger than your fears. And that he has exactly what you need the moment you need it. Praise the Lord. He never fails you. He always comes through. In the midnight hour, it looks like everything's gone chaotic. All of a sudden, that light begins to shine in the middle of the storm. That's what happened when that North Star began to shine. Hope began to hit at the world. Amen. And God's promise began to manifest. Amen. I love what the word says in John. John it says, the word that we handle, the word that we touch, and how the word has manifested. God wants us to manifest him this morning. How we do that? He said, we enter his work with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're washed by the water of the word. So he's going to begin to enter that court and then begin to lift our hands and begin to say, God, I thank you for my salvation. I praise you for this beautiful day you've given me. Amen. Amen. The heavens begin to light. Amen. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the storm, the good news. Tell me all about the good news. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love good news. Amen. Amen. I love good news. Amen. We go through tribulation, we go through problems, but God always prepares a table in the presence of our enemy. You know, so many storms we face today in life. We need to, this morning as we're gathered together, we need to pray for Bill and Chris. Mark, amen. Sister Chris is doing better. They ran all the tests, they couldn't find anything. Amen. They give her some medication and she's trying to balance out, but they never know what's wrong. But I'm going to tell you, I believe God's already took care of it. Come on. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. But God Bradford, we need to be praying for him. You know, he's been attacked in his body, but there was any in the power of agreement. But I have really a special need prayer this morning. Uh, Pastor Ron Baker's daughter named Amber said, Pastor or co-pastor of the church North Star here in Tulsa. Amber went into uh, a, a coma about a week ago. No reason at all, just all of a sudden just went out. They ran to the hospital and she was like that in the emergency room for a while. She's still in the ICU. Amen. But we want to lift them up. Amen. Pastor Rod being a partner of that, many of the gifts that are under that tree came from the North Star Church. Amen. And they had their Christmas last weekend and had these left over. And I mean, we were praying for gifts. Amen. And I appreciate all of you by the lot of gifts too. So it's not all from there, but I'm thankful that God always comes through. Because Wednesday it was bigger, and today it's full. Amen. Yeah. Is that not our God? Amen. Don't look at me. Amen. Enemy, don't rejoice over me. For in the morning I will arrive. Come on, praise the Lord. So why don't you come to the power of prayer? Grab somebody to you beside me as we pray the prayer of faith. And then Bob said, if you agree to touch on anything, God sent his word to forgive us and to heal us. Said by his stripes we are healed. You ready? Father, we come to the church. And Father, you gave us the keys to the kingdom. He said, whatever the church binds on earth should be bound in heaven. And whatever the church looses on earth should be loosed in heaven. We loose the mighty blood of Jesus Christ over the lives of people that he's healing in their body right now. We pray for Amber. We pray for Bob. We pray for Chris right now. We speak your word to them and we share your word of healing power to them right now. And we thank you for total restoration, total healing, and total victory in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you the praise.
Christ. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. And all of us out there that are not spoken request right now, I come to the power of agreement with their financial needs that they need. I come to the agreement with the healing that they need. Sure, we have to be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart disease be healed right now in the name of Jesus. My great head be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Back pain be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Cramps be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Sinus conditions right now. Father, we bind sinus to the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for so healing. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. We thank you for We praise you for We give you the glory this morning. Amen. Ten thousand times more. Ten thousand times more. I am not seen no river. Get ready, get ready, get ready. If I had a word for the church this year, it would be get ready, get ready, get ready. Praise the Lord. That would be the word. Get ready, get ready, get ready. But something is worthy. Something is happening. And it's happening in the spiritual realm. And the natural realm can't stop what God is getting ready. The word inside the church. Inside the river of the church. A rushing wind is anointing and sweeping over the body of Christ and over the world and opening the heart and the mind and the intellect of humanity to receive the word of the Lord in clarity. In clarity. In clarity. Oh. He said, once you were blind and you couldn't see, you were deaf and you couldn't hear. But the deaf ears are coming open and the blinded eyes are beginning to see. Praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Brother Randy, Lord, he said something. He said, doors that in the past were closed, I'm getting ready to open. Things that could not be seen, I'm getting ready to manifest. I'm linking it together now, and that which you can't see. And when I put it together, it will be a chain that will be so strong that it will pull the walls down and it will restore to you the years that you suffered, the years that you've given. I've seen them, I know you by name, and I know you and the ways that you walk with me. And I will open up a door for you that no man can shut, and I will establish your footsteps, and you will declare the words more than the years ahead of you, than all the years behind you, and I will show forth with signs, wonders, and miracles, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. It's for standing in the gap, and all we have is little babies to get people. 
people, little canned goods here and there. Until we grew our warehouse in this last year, we fed 5.5 million pounds of food in Oklahoma. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God has just blessed us and blessed us. I have been with this this weekend, this Friday. We sacked for 400 families. Amen. And we've got 150 families. And I know of Oklahoma. We've got 150 families in Chicago, Oklahoma. And we've got another 100. Amen. In Muskogee, Rain Wright. At Boynton and Council Hill. Amen. And that's not in county what we're feeding here. Amen. At Corita, Oklahoma, which is our largest distribution center. That's just what we're doing with our network partners. If they come here and stack food, if we put it together, amen, and give to them so much food that now it takes them two days to come and get all the food that they're feeding people. Amen. Because God's giving us fresh foods, potatoes, apples, oranges. Things that you ate, things that you like to eat, eggs, milk, come on, thank cheese, big they'll eat lots of cheese. Amen. We get 10 pound bags of chicken quarters. We get three different types of Walmart meat. We get two baking chickens, praise the Lord. And we just pound the people with meat and they get into ready for the season. Last month, we gave away a thousand turkeys and hams all together. It was all over with. And we reached out with God's love. Amen. And then everybody who did a turkey or ham, they got two baby, big baby hens. Amen. I'm talking about eight hens weighed 40 pounds. Now, that's a big chicken. I'm just saying, big chicken. But I, I love it because I said, well, you take two chickens to cook them and you have chicken instead of turkey. But God's blessed that. Well, this week, you know, we've been doctoring our freezer. Our freezer, I've got to understand, it's a 16 by 12 freezer, and we just continually bring it in, take it out, bring it in, and take it out, because we don't have a big enough freezer. Well, in doing so, what you're doing is you never let it really be able to get really solid. They can have, you know, the meat that bet it stays in there. What happens is that we may continually have to repair it, repair it, repair it, repair it. Well, it went out on Wednesday, and I had to call all the ministries that were coming. I had them come, and we emptied out our freezer, and we uh, put it in our freezer truck, and then it got to them, and gave all the meat out, and so our freezer is empty right now of meat. Amen. It's empty right now of meat. I called the uh, guy from Haskell, the one that's always done our work on it. He said, well, I can't repair it anymore. He said, it's done its last repair. He said, you're going to have to get a new outside unit. And I said, well, what's that going to cost you? He said, $3,200. If you all see my post on Facebook, and then I'm going to thank those that came in. $1,500 has came in so far of the $3,200 that we need. But we need to have another, what, $1,800, I guess, to be able to, I don't know how to do it right now, but uh, to be able to picture the freezer. And the reason why we need it is, is because I'm getting ready to pick another 8,000 pounds of meat up. No. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. The Lord. So I've got two choices. We either fix it or we call them and say, no, I don't want the meat. No. Give it to somebody else. But I want to pick up the meat. Amen. So this morning, if you got a love offering that you can give this morning to help us with the freezer, just write the freezer on the memo line and just let us know on that and tell us that God has put in your heart to give to that. We're very thankful. You know, we got the grant. And we got our second box truck and with the freezer refrigerator. Come on. Somebody say praise the Lord. So we've been just increasing, but we're watching God take this to another level. Amen. And then he's stretching us. Amen. We're getting ready to start opening probably many Joseph houses in different areas in Oklahoma and be able to establish different network partners there and let them begin to instead of having to drive an hour and a half to get here like we follow Oklahoma. <laughs> And then allow them to be able to come and receive that. So I just want to receive our offering this morning. And then give a gift. And then the word of God says, when you fed the poor, you fed me. When I was naked and you clothed me, that was me. When I was in prison and you visited me, that was me. Then he says this. When you open your hand wide to the poor and you lend to them, you lend to the Lord and God will repay. I want to tell you, I've never seen God give back to me as fast as he does, especially when I get to someone that I have no way of them ever paying me back, ever giving me anything. In fact, the greatest gift that I've received is when they don't even know who I am. 
Praise God. You know that most of the nations don't even know who you are. You fed 20 million people this year, and they don't even know who we are. They don't even know who we are. But yet we reach out and we impact them through our giving. Amen. And God allows them to do what God called them to do. So this morning, let's open our hearts. Father, we just open our heart. Father, we give cheerfully this morning. We don't give grudgingly. We're not going to be beat up this morning, but God, we want this offer to go before you as a sweet aroma. Giving back to you, God, what you've given to us. And we know it would never be enough, but we thank you for the opportunity to do what you did. We love you and we thank you today. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, Amen. 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 Is the joy of the Lord your strength? Amen. Come on, is the joy of the Lord your strength? Amen. You see, if you've lost your joy, you've lost your victory. Praise the Lord. Yes. Come on, praise the Lord. If you can't put a smile on your face anymore, you've lost your victory. But God wants to restore to you the years that the enemy has stole from you. You see, God didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but he sent his son to the world to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Before I get into my message this morning, Randy and Kim, I want to thank you for being here. Those that know, it's one of the very first mission trips that I ever took in my life was to St. Petersburg, Russia. I was going to school at Victory Christian Center, and uh, Terry Hinshaw was my missions director, and Terry had set up his group to go to Russia. Well, I'd never been on a trip, so I was just one part of the team that was going to Russia. And uh, what ended up happening was the people that were over it, they got in a fight or something, and they left, and we came in, there was only like six or seven of us left. And Terry Henshaw came up to me and said, I want you to leave this team to Russia. And I said, I've never even been on a mission trip. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to leave the team to Russia. And I said, I've never even been out of America. And he said, well, you've been preaching. The other ones haven't been preaching. You've been doing ministry. So uh, we're going to have you. And he said, don't worry about it. I pray for that. And going to be all right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And gave me the number and name of Randy. Amen. The St. Petersburg, Russia. And thank the Lord for you. Amen. You want to stand up and say something for the Lord? Amen. You don't have to. You don't have to. Want to. He said, I preach all the time. You don't have to. You know, I'm just very thankful to both of them. They, they took our team in, and we were, uh, Kim, where's Kim at? Is Kim next door? Oh, I looked for Kim. She went next door. I was going next door to the kids. Amen. She's over with the kids. She's going to do ministry. But I'm so thankful we went in there, our team did. And none of us are the same. Amen. Every one of us got changed. He stretched us like nobody could ever stretch you. We got off the plane. The very first thing he did, is he took us to the hotel. And then loaded us up and took us to an auditorium and had a service. Amen. And I remember Pastor Sasson. That was his name. What? Pastor Sasson was there. And I walked over. I said, what's going on? It's an auditorium. I said, what's going on? He said, he said well, you're, you're a preacher, aren't you? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, well, we're being preached. <laughs> they had the praise team up, and we opened it up, and then he had us teach three hours of Bible college every day, plus services. You're talking about working, and most of our kids who were with us had never taught Bible school in their life. Amen. And they got stretched to the max as we were teaching the Word of God. Amen. And I watched people grow. Amen. And that. Every day it was like they were trying to get somebody else to take their place. Because <laughs> they were, they said, what am I going to say for three hours? What am I going to say? Amen. But, but I thank you, guys. I thank you, Kim and Randy, for your giving to the Lord and uh, teaching me now for all over the world. And it's all because of your birthday that started in the beginning. You birthed a vision in me and and stretch me to make me be able to believe the things that we do today. Amen. I know the beginnings where you build all your limitations. Amen. And I had great men and women in my life that tore down those limitations and said, you got to go to the world. Amen. Because I was in Queen, Oklahoma. Yes, I had preached for a long time, but my preaching was in Oklahoma, Texas, if I could get back home. Missouri, if I could get back home, but I never went any farther than I couldn't get back home because I love my bed and I like my food. Praise the Lord. So I was a convenient preacher. That's all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. But those that left everything and went on the field, I really appreciate that. 
appreciate Christ tonight. Amen. The fact that God loved us, that gave us something to cheer our hearts. You know, I have joy in my heart today. There were many years of my life that I was disgusted with life. I didn't really have anybody in my life that I valued or that I really felt was important. And God, when he touched me, he miraculously changed me. Amen. I'd like to tell you that everything changed immediately, but it didn't. It was a process. Amen. It was a process of development. And we'll read the story about Jesus in the chapter of Luke, the second chapter, 1 through 20. We're going to read that this morning. Amen. As we talk about Christmas, as we talk about the ultimate gift that God gave, I know God gave us the best that you could possibly give us. Without it, we would all be lost. But because He did, but when He came, people had been waiting. You know, so many of us right now were waiting for a miracle, waiting for something to happen. And I want to tell you that the Word of God is everlasting. In fact, the Bible said that Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. And he is faithful to finish what he started in your life. And all the people in the word of God, they walk by faith, not by sight. They're walking on the promises of God. In the same way, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because by faith, the worlds were praying together. Right now, maybe you can't see all the things getting ready to happen in your life. But I'm going to tell you, he's faithful. Come on, he's faithful. And these promises in Isaiah, the promises, all the many prophecies that Jesus come for over thousands of years waiting for it to happen. But the Bible said in the fullness of time he came. Amen. Praise the Lord. And all those that were waiting, they saw it and their sorrow was turned to joy. Yeah. We're going to talk about the joy of the Lord is the good news. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh. Uh, so Joseph went out from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, uh, Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, uh, to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house of the land of David and he went there to register Mary the place to be married to him and was expecting a child and while they were there the time came for the baby to be born and they gave birth to her firstborn son she wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room at the inn and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby keeping watch over the flocks at night and the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Everybody say it's for everybody. Are you glad that God didn't have a section of people, but he loved everybody? Regardless of what color you are, regardless of what language you speak, all those barriers are not barriers to God. Amen. They're barriers to humanity, but they're not barriers to God. He's God to all people and all generations. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. said, Today in the town of David, a Savior shall be born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and all earth peace to men to whom favor rests. Amen. How many of you here say you can receive the favor of God? You didn't deserve it, but God gave it to you. Amen. 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 They didn't Amen. deserve what was happening, but it was happening and God was manifesting himself. I'm going to tell you that God is getting ready to really manifest himself in America and around the world. And he's doing it because of the same reason the fullness of time has come. Amen. Amen. How do you know? He said these signs shall follow them that believe. We're beginning to start watching the signs every time we begin to start manifesting. I'm not talking about natural signs. I know we got Bible prophecy teachers everywhere that are teaching on the signs and Bible prophecies of this happening and this happening. But I'm talking about the real sign to me is the sign of the Spirit. When my spirit bears witness with his spirit, when God begins to start speaking a word to me, there is a spiritual function that is happening in those that are believing, that are praying, that are seeking oh, God. Yeah. And God is speaking that the power of his return hey. is getting ready to happen. Yeah. Jesus oh, is getting ready to come back. And the Thank same you, way he was born in that manger, he said, in the life of man of the valley, I come back again. Yeah. I want to tell you, we're getting ready to enter every eyes to see him. And then he is going to bow, and every tongue is going to repent that Jesus Christ is yeah. Lord. Or yeah. watch you some narrow or, or a path. You know, everything in history seems to repeat itself. I got news for you. 
you. God's getting ready to repeat because we're going to be birthed. Amen. Praise the Lord. A spiritual awakening and the dead in Christ are raised. Oh, well, we have quick life in a moment. Shall be caught up together to meet in the air. When the angels of the and God in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and let us see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby were lying in the manger. And when they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all that heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all those things and pondered them in her heart. Holy and the shepherds God. returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that had been heard and seen, which were just and had been told. Amen. How many know? The exciting news of hearing the good news. That way, I love to hear something good. I love when somebody comes up to me and tells me something that God has done for them, a breakthrough that has happened to them. Somebody's received a healing from cancer or heart disease or something, something manifested from God in their life. And I'm going to tell you, they've been waiting and watching and looking for the return of Christ. Many were not waiting and watching. But this morning, I believe those that are here this morning, you're here because you know Jesus Christ. You're here because you love the Lord. You're not here, but he had a reason except for you been born again and you tasted of the goodness of God. And that God is speaking to you this morning and telling you the good news is here. I am resurrected. I am the life. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. What did Jesus do? And when Jesus is born, he was the hope of the world. When you get that inside, you can't help but tell everybody about it. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. you got to get it out of the You know about the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And Isaiah 40, which wrote more about Christ than anybody. Then O Zion, who brings the good tidings. Give him the high mountains of Jerusalem and bring the good tidings. Lift up your voice for strength and lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judea, Behold your God. It's time for us to get bold in the Lord. It's time for us to start confessing the word over our situation and have faith in God that God's going to meet every need of God. It's time for us to get bold. You know, the shepherds, they were bold. And then the wise men, they were bold in their faith. When everything said no, they said yes because they saw the sign of his coming. I'm going to tell you, we need to get ready, church. We need to get ready. We need to get bold in our testimony. And then we got people that are lost, that are hungry, oh, that need God. to hear the word of the Lord. He's the good news, and if he's in your heart, he's filled you up with it. Amen? And that's strength. He said, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. And so we've got to get our confession of faith right. Come on. Pray that we got to get our confession of faith right and start speaking the good things of God. And quit talking about our problems and start confessing God's promises. Oh, yeah. Yes and amen. And start standing on the word of God. You see, praising God comes in advance. Yes. Oh, it's like that. Praising yeah. God comes in advance. Yeah. Yeah. They hadn't seen him yet, but they heard the good news and they started rejoicing. I know that faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of the Lord. It said the word is not even in your mouth, the word of faith to save your soul. I want to tell you your victory is in your confession of faith, of speaking the mouth. The Bible says, have faith in God. Amen. And believe those things you confess with your mouth. Believe them in your heart. You can say to the mouth, be now removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be cast into the sea. I don't know what problems you're facing, but I'm going to tell you that same Jesus who was born in that manger, that same good news that the heavenly host was speaking about. My spirit is very quick with this spirit. Oh, yeah. God, 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 God. Now is the time of restitution oh, right. of all things. Now is the time of my outpour. Now is the time for you to go forth and start preaching this gospel. Now is the time for you to go into all the world. It's not a time for us to withdraw, but it's time for us to advance. It's time for us to expand. It's time, as Isaiah said, to glory to the place of our dwelling and start believing God for more and more and more. God cooking for people of faith that are ready to enter in into the ministry and start doing what God's called you to do. We know you've been called from early time. Just like the shepherd, just like the wise men, God right. prepared you for such a time as this. Yeah. Psalm 121, 24 says, Lift the hair yeah. off the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. 
He watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, you watch over Israel will neither slumber nor he'll sleep. God is your author and your finisher. I want to tell you, he's faithful to finish what he started in you. Amen. This is the word for you this morning. God is not through with you yet. Amen. It's not over yet. Amen. The light is shining in the darkness and the darkness can't comprehend it. God is sending things to you from the north, the south, the east, and the west, just like he did Jesus when he was born, and the fullness of time came. And the people that God has called to walk beside you, uh, that are going to give them to your bosom, uh, that God, God has called you for a specific purpose and a specific plan. For Jeremiah says, I've got these plans for you, and they are good plans, plans of peace. Uh, yeah. I've called you and anointed you for this such a time as this. Glory to God. The power of us is in his strength. Isaiah 41 10 says, so Do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness in my hand. Everybody say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. God is with me in this earth. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, God, for thou art with me. Yeah, my cup does run us over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me, what? All. Everybody say, all. all. The days of my life. God's strength is what we rely on. We can't do it except we abide in Him. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you can ask whatsoever you will, and it will be given to you of my Father in heaven. But people ask me, how are you going to feed 100 million people next year? I said, well, physically, there's no one. Financially, there's no one. Come on, praise the Lord. Mentally, there's probably no one. The bank will probably say no. I'm going to praise the Lord. Everything will say no. But God said yes. Come on. God said yes. He said, we're here to speak the vision. For the vision is for an appointed time. I'm going to tell you they were declaring that Jesus was coming back again. They were declaring and nobody was believing it. But the Bible said in the fullness of time, God showed up and God showed off. Come on, praise the Lord. The devil never would have killed him if he would have known the plan of God. But because he did, Jesus rolled the stone away. Amen. How many know? And raised up triumph with victory. You might not look like it, but you're a king's kid. Yeah. And you're yeah. 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 the Lord. It's time for Thank you to start shouting for a God before you who can be against you. Hey, Come on, let's get some good news for this morning. You got to shout in here this morning. Psalms 100 says, shout the joy, shout the joy of the Lord. Hey, 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 Worship hey, hey, hey. the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He is he who made us and we are his. We are his people. Come on, people. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray uh -huh, come and on. turn from the wicked way, then I will hear from heaven. Come on. And my eyes will be upon that place. Yeah. Come on, praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He told Jeremiah, meditate. And yo, and yo, Joshua, meditate upon my word. Don't worry. Don't be fearful. For the Lord God is with you. Yeah. Amen. Remember, though. Remember, don't to the left or the right. Don't get upset with the things that you see. But know that God's going to take you in the promised land. Come on, somebody. You got to know God's going to take you in the promised land. He's going to make your dream a reality. He's got a plan for you. Amen. Jesus gave a plan for you. He was born in earth to show you the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. To have abundant life. But we got to get some things lined up with the Word of God. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When you hear me, you've heard the Father. And so he got his confession right. He got his walk right. And all of a sudden, everywhere he went, God worked with him. Nicodemus said, I know you must be a God because no man can do what you do except God be with him. And Jesus said, greater things will you do when I go to the right hand of the Father and I send back the comfort. Everybody say greater. Hey. We're supposed to take what God gave and we're supposed to duplicate this. Adam and Eve 
We're not supposed to die, but they were supposed to duplicate the Garden of Eden all over the earth. But yet, because of their sin, oh, come on. Yet, because of their blindness, oh, yeah. they couldn't sin. I'm asking you to open your eyes this morning to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Open your heart and receive the words of faith and believe that God has got something better for you today. Yeah, amen. We need to start praising the fruit of your lips. Glory, glory, glory. That's what we're created to do. Know that he is the Lord God. And I have Psalms 100. And he has even made us. And we are his people, the sheep of his pastors. Yeah. It is gate with thanksgiving. Oh, it is court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. Yeah, oh, praise the Lord. Everybody say that's me. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about Isaiah. I'm not talking about Nehemiah. I'm not talking about Moses. I'm talking about you, Patty. I'm talking about you, Bill. I'm talking about you, Randy. I'm talking that God is for you today, John. Hey, Mr. Lester, he's there for you. Kim, he's there for you. This morning, God got a plan for you this morning, and it's a good plan, and he's already given you the gift. He supplied all your needs according to his riches and glory for Jesus Christ. They're born in that manger was the full potential of God to manifest himself in you and make you able ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Woo! Praise the Lord. How's he going to do it after I throw him? And I will pour out my, I will pour out the house of David and the habits of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Oh, thank God for his grace. You don't deserve it, but God's going to give it to you anyway. Amen. 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 And he's pouring out that spirit of supplication that cries, Abba, Father. Amen. How many of y'all feel in that inner spirit? Amen. The need to pray more. The need to be in the house of God. That's the unction of God's prophecy. Speaking in the last day, I will pour out my spirit on all faith. Yes, it began 2,000, 2,000 years ago. But it's not diminished. It's getting greater and greater and greater. The closer we get to the end, the stronger it's going to get. Until we all begin to start coming to the knowledge that he is Lord. God's not going to give up on you. No. I didn't forget when I was running from God. No matter where I was at, God always showed up. Somebody always, I remember you, I remember this, I remember this every time. And I was always running, and I thought, there's no way, God, that you can have anybody where I'm at. I was in a house full of drugs, and somebody said, I mean, came in and said, I remember you, didn't you go to church steps and stuff way back there? And I was like, oh, I'm going to hide. Yeah, I did. Amen. I remember you doing this, and I remember God putting things in remembrance. Because God said, I'm not giving up on you. Jesus just says this to you today. God is not giving up on you. And the fullness of this potential of his plan for you is still yet to manifest. And that God's Spirit is going to lead you and guide you. And he's going to manifest it in you. That you might become the full potential of God. The power of God's forgiveness. He said, Luke 2, 11 said, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. It is Christ the Lord. A Savior. A Redeemer. Amen. How many know? He purchased us back. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He gave himself and he redeemed us. Amen. He could have condemned us, but he forgave you. I want to tell you, let me never say, you are forgiven. Woo! Praise the Lord. God is not mad at you. But this morning, God loves you. Amen. He wants to shine a light in the middle of your storm. He wants to make a way of escape for you when there seems to be no way. Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reach in together and say of the Lord, Though your sins be red as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, 
They shall be like wool. In other words, the cleansing power of God is able to clean you no matter what you've done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, so many times we think, there's no way God's going to forgive me for what I did. There's no way that God's going to use me for what I did. I've done too many things wrong. I guess where I was at when God showed up. And I've been in three to six cells sitting in Big Mac and God shows up. And he said to me, he says, you've been running so hard, so fast. I've been trying to talk to you. But today I'm going to set before you a decision you've been making. God said, I've got a plan for you. Oh, come on, tonight. i got a plan for you. I said, God, don't you know where I'm at? What are you doing showing up in this house? I'm all about that. Why are you showing up here? I'm not a church. I'm not with a choir. I'm not where anybody even visits me, God. And God said to me, I have a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. God's got a purpose and a plan for your life this morning. Amen. And what that Jesus being born in that manger said, regardless of how much money you got, he was born in a manger. He gave everything himself. But he was the full potential of God before he ever started. I want to tell you how many here are born again. The same Jesus and the same spirit that raised him from the dead now has quickened your mortal body. And that which was impossible has now been made possible. And that God's going to finish what he started in you this morning. The power of abundant life. John 3, 16. For God to greatly love and dearly prize the world that he gave up his only begotten unique son. That whosoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, or relies on him shall not perish or come to destruction or loss, but have eternal, everlasting life. Oh, yeah. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of what you've given up in the past, regardless of how many times God has forgiven you, healed you, delivered you, yeah. God is still your Redeemer, and He's faithful to do it again. Right. You have the beauty of God, He'll do it again. Come on, somebody. He'll do it again. I thank God as I preach it everywhere. I thank God for second chances that God keeps giving me second chances. How many times I messed up, but God steps in and He says, You can do it. He's my greatest cheerleader. He's my partner. He's my brother. He's my doctor. He's my physician feeder. Where would I be without my God? But this morning I had this confidence that if you call upon the name of the Lord, if you turn to God and you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and change you of all in life and heal you and deliver you. And make a way for you where there is no way. Yes. Then a turn like you thought was impossible. And God will make it possible. But with the God, all things are possible. I know Jonah didn't think God would come back. But God never gave up on him. He's in the middle of a well. He's riding in the water. But God's still talking to him in the middle of a well. And God's still making a way of escape for him. All Jonah had to do was turn to God and say, God, I'll go to Nineveh. I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm not going to leave you my own understanding. But I'm going to acknowledge you this morning. And God, you're going to make a way for me this morning. I'm going to tell you, God wants to make a way for you this morning. God wants to open the full potential of what he gave. That God gave his very best. To open a door of opportunity for you. That no man can shut except you. No man can do it but you. Thank the Bible Lord. says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Help us, Father. Help us, Father. Wow. Oh, Somebody yeah. said to me this week. I said, I pray and pray for this, I pray for that, I try to figure everything out. I think it's just time for me to just give up and let God do whatever he wants to do. Something in there. You've been trying to figure it out, you've been trying to help God out. 
You can't help God out. All God wants from you is the willingness to say, yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. It's called grace yeah. and mercy. God does what you can do, and he gives you what you don't deserve. And he takes you to a place you should never be in, yeah. but he gives it to you yeah. anyway. Thank that close this morning, I'm going to open this door of opportunity to you. Thank you, Jesus. Say, the word is not in you, it's even at your mouth, the word of faith that we preach. Then if you'll confess with your heart, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God gave his only son. Oh, you got it. And made a way for you when there seemed to be no way. If you believe that, you will be saved. Salvation is so much more than I know I'm going to get to heaven. It's about a personal relationship. It's about entering in the plan of God. You don't get it from other people. You get it from God. Yeah. This morning I hear would say, I need God's help. A lot of things in my life are just not going the way that I think they should go. I'm taking two steps I think a step forward and with a two step backwards, it just seems like everything's getting more cloudy and more cloudy and more cloudy. And I need some clarity in my life. I need a miracle this morning. Praise the Lord. So many times we think we've got to do something to get a miracle. A miracle is the gift of God. It's called the gift of the Spirit. It's the working of miracles. Amen. Supernatural fight as part of the gift of the Spirit. And if you'll ask, God's faithful to release it to you. If you believe. How many of you say, I need a miracle this morning? I need a miracle this morning. You might need a miracle in your body. He sent his son to die on the cross and bear your infirmities and bear your sicknesses. If by his stripes you are healed. Don't leave away from here this morning without receiving your gift. Jesus was there in that manger, and only a few people came to visit the full potential of God. Oh, but everyone has read the story. They came and beheld the glory of God, got joy in their heart, and got a miracle. They started testifying of the goodness of God. You raise your hand, I want you to just make your way up here this morning. As you do, I want to close online. For those watching online, I want to tell you, I thank you for your turning in today with us. I want to tell you that God loves you and that he cares about you. Christmas is not about the tree or the presents. It's about the gift that was already given. It's about receiving that gift, the gift of God. He said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, so God's not a respecter person. He said, whoever needs me, I'm there for you. God wants to give you what you need today. If you're facing battles in your life, if your marriage is dissolved and your children are running away, you're financially broke, you're destitute, you think nobody loves you, all those things are negative news. I'm speaking to you the good news, that God wants to fill your heart with joy and the full potential of God. Oh, All you got to say is this this morning. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he was the gift of God for humanity. And I confess with the mouth that I believe in my heart that he died for me and shed his blood. And that through that gift right now, I receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. Sometimes it seems too easy God didn't come to make it hard. He came to open the door of opportunity. God bless you. Remember, Jesus is Lord. This morning, don't walk out of here if you've got a need in your life.